Chuka chuka. It's episode forty one. We're here, um, checking it out with our uh, philosophy podcast. Going heavy on the philosophy at the end of this one. It kind of went long, actually. Didn't yeah, was, to... yeah, we started going off on waxing philosophical. So, uh, if you stay tuned to the end, you'll uh, understand the secrets of the universe even better. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you haven't heard of Ash L, this is his new track. Uh, I actually made the cover art for it, so check that out. Ash L, no, youtube.com slash Ash L Music, A S H, and soundcloud.com slash slash Ash L Music. Cool. Summer hit, got it. Mm-hmm. So, um, what can we get to support the podcast, Vish? We can, um, uh, Patreon it. Patreon it, yeah. Yeah, um, patreon.com slash Socratic Gamers. Merchandise? Uh, we can go to shop.dollarmyfire.com. You pick up some teas off Teespring. I know if you checked out my Instagram, you saw some t shirts already. Uh, a little bit of a hack, I got that at Pimo. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, I had enough time to wait for the order, but you guys can wait for the order. Yeah. Cool. It's not important. I'm teaching on Monday at noon MMA. Mm-hmm. Check that out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we gotta go to Rich. Nothing. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Oscars tomorrow. Yeah. All right. That's cool. We didn't talk about that. We'll talk about Oscars next. Yeah, next week. Next week. Yeah. We'll save that one. Um, yeah. What's your favorite part of this podcast? Uh, the answer. The question that you. That's true, that's true. That's a really good one. All right. Yeah, yeah. Listen to the very end because uh, Vish blew me away with his answer to my philosophical question. I was like, floored. I'd never heard that before. Maybe you've heard it before. Maybe you said it before, but uh, I had never heard that before. So, okay. All right. Let's uh, start this bad boy. Here we go. One. And boom, we are back with another episode of Socratic Gamers. Uh, this is episode 41. Divisible by one and 41. Okay, sure. <laughs> we are uh, here again with uh, BJ the Dog Whisperer, and Vishal coughs a lot, needs water. I think when you talk a lot, you do need that to lubricate the vocal cords. I've never actually had that problem before, though. Remember the like, last week? Like, oh, uh, I was like, wow, you, you really <laughs> can't talk yeah, right now. Just, yeah, you yeah, actually yeah. can't talk. No, it makes sense. A lot of people who do that, a lot of talking, they do have water beside them. That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah that's true. Right. Uh, so this is the show where we uh, take on five things from the week that we thought were interesting and uh, talk about our opinion of them. Does our opinion matter? Uh, no. No. I mean. I mean, does your opinion one matter? Person out of what? Or two people out of seven billion of those. So. Yeah. So listen if you want. Don't listen. If you don't want. Okay, so uh, our first topic of the week is... Go ahead, Vish. So I got a couple things on Trump that happened this week. Okay, cool. Uh, so... Trump trouble. Trump trouble, yeah. So I think it was like the week before there was like a shooting at a school. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was that? Oh, man, that's so bad that we don't even know. It's like... What but was it, that? <laughs> that's a problem when it happens so much that people are like, oh, yeah, another shooting. Mm. Yeah, Remember yeah, when yeah. the first one, like Columbine, and then it, it got that like whole press, like Columbine, yeah, you know? Yeah, a long time ago, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but now it's like, another shooting, you're like, oh, okay. Like, that's so horrible. <laughs> I understand that, because if you yeah. lost somebody in the shooting, yeah. like, don't think I'm a cold person. I'm just saying it happens more often than not now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like the, uh, not Florida, Las Vegas one? No, uh, mm. t- I think it was Texas. Texas, there you go. All right, Wait, It was Texas. Uh, but yeah, what, mainly what I'm... Uh, was trying to get to was like they instead of dealing with the gun problem okay they're trying to push it on as as some other thing is the cause so okay which was video games oh interesting okay which has been talked about since columbine (laughs) yeah that's true yeah yeah do video video games yeah influence people and uh yeah none of the no evidence suggests suggests that it's video games (laughs) That's true. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Uh, I, I studied this in psych before. Uh, we were taking social psych, and uh, that was one of the questions. It was one of the chapters in the book, and they said, no, it doesn't. Um, yeah. No. Yeah, so that, that was, was one thing that was like, again, re- they're just going back and reiterating the same 
ideas, ideas to like push up. Nothing a changing. Old paradigm. Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, but I feel like they just need a scapegoat, right? You just need something. No, no, no to blame, I know, right? I know. But I think at this point, people have realized that's not. That made sense before because there wasn't any like True, research yeah. into yeah, it. Yeah. But now there's so much that. Like no one has brought up video games. So, so for is a it long fake time. news or is it just old old mindsets pushing like incorrect paradigms? You know what I mean? It's like it's like uh, when people are like, "Oh, let's watch the news." Well, that's a dinosaur kind of thing. Like if you look at social media, like YouTube and stuff, or like even like uh, Twitters and stuff, it's mm-hmm. usually faster. You know, yeah, yeah, but yeah. but I guess like one could say well, the old argument would be that um, the news actually at least has like uh, fact checking. You know, it's like it's like oh, you can't trust what you see on social media because the news fact checks. But now we're finding out like, well, they also have fake news, so they're just as incorrect as the people that they said they were, that were incorrect. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. Yeah, but I don't think that's what I'm trying to get to. I'm just saying. No, like, I'm just saying it's a divergent topic. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're just going back at it, same same old thing. Anyways, that was one of the parts that happened earlier this week, and then another thing uh, with Trump was. He didn't do this. Like normally, he's just saying that I think we should add 25% tariffs on steel and aluminum, and all of a sudden the Dow uh, Jones dropped ooh, over the past, rough. past three days. Over saying I think. Yeah, I think we should draw. <clears throat> we should add um, 25% tariffs. So then, because of that, people were like, "Oh, they sell their." Wow. I think it was Bombardier and, and Caterpillar. Mm, yeah. Capital, uh, Caterpillar. Caterpillar. Yeah, Caterpillar. Yeah. <laughs> I think is they have the most uh, in the steel world. Right, right, right. And aluminum. So it could even Big affect plummeted. iPhones. It could affect... Wow. If, if this goes through, like these got to like sign and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could affect even Tesla cars because a lot of that's made in, with aluminum. And I wonder if they're buying locally or they're buying... It's it's funny how like the uh, stock market works, you know? Like they, they're obsessed with like watching the news and then like playing... Like uh, stock market's like gambling, right? And like yeah. you, you adjust... Your, uh, some people wouldn't say it's gambling. They say it's like strategic... Um, problem solving, I guess, or like guessing, it's not guessing, guessing. It's like it's guessing, statistics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, guessing, still guessing. But yeah. but so it's funny how like even the slightest thing can set them off like this. So it's like he's like, <laughs> I think we should, and then boom, it dropped. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's like, but it would be pretty funny to like uh, troll these people if if you were so powerful, you start trolling them. Like, oh, this is gonna happen. And then you watch it fluctuate up and down according to what you say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, but that was yeah, that was another thing. But uh, like. It could potentially affect a lot of us. What do you mean? Like price, because it's it. He was trying to do it so that people wouldn't buy Chinese steel. Okay. And then they'd want to buy more local, like within the country, right? Okay. In yeah. America, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the funny thing is, all of Trump's buildings were made by Chinese steel. Oh, and they're rough not even life. number one. They're not even number one imports of steel into America. Rough life. Okay. I th- I think that's what I heard on the news that Canada is number one and it could affect us. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. It could affect our economy. It's it's weird how like uh, economic systems are set up like that, where it's like a uh, it's like a domino effect. One goes down, the others go down. You know? Yeah. And then you could see like uh, like you have to be very wary of uh, like th- that's why I don't hold stuff like this against people, like people in government, because it's it's got to be very difficult to like every decision you make has a like a crazy spiraling out impact mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm, yeah. it's like they think it's like, like people are like oh well just don't do this but then it's like well you don't realize the, the impact that this 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 and this would have mm-hmm, on it mm-hmm. you know what i mean so like i i think it's just people doing the best that they can also fighting against their own greed also fighting their against their own altruism you know yeah yeah so it's like well i'm not in that field can't really judge mm-hmm. so we'll see how it goes uh, throughout the week cuz it did drop quite a bit points for mm-hmm. Dow Jones. So, yeah, uh, it'll don't... probably pick itself up. It might. We have to see. You know, it'd be a crazy longer. conspiracy if like he did that while working with them because he knew it would drop, and then you you buy back the stock as it goes up. Like you know, what I mean, it's like it's like you make no, it go I down think... so that people could buy it, and then you like never mind. I'm actually gonna yeah, yeah, cut yeah, taxes, yeah. and then boom, it goes back up, and then those people that invested when it went down make a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. Generally, that could happen. Who knows? Uh, but I don't that? think you can do that, though. It's not like insider trading kind of thing. No, 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 no. no because he's he's if just he's setting with them, it. You know what I'm saying? True. Yeah, but that's why it's a conspiracy. Mm. You know, that would be that would be a pretty good way to make money, though. You know what I mean? Because like they say, the best time to invest is when the market's down. Yeah. You know. Of course, but that's always the best. 
No, that's what I'm saying. So it's like <laughs> so he'll just influence it to make it go down. It's totally speculative. There's no there's no yeah, yeah, truth yeah, to yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. In case somebody's like, you know, like, oh man, that's what they're doing. No, no, I'm just saying it would be a really good business plan if they did this. Like, or a good greedy genius. plan. Greedy plan. I don't know yeah. what a business plan. Speaking of not greedy, uh, or unless you're, you didn't, you know. No, uh, I think that was it for Trump. There was just a little quick news on that. All right, so like to appreciate the Dow of life, we got to go negative. Now we got to go positive. Uh, so Brian Ortega, T City. Um, it's funny when I first met t city not that i know him but like i went to his seminar and i yeah. went to the seminar for henry gracie and then like <clears throat> this guy t city was there like his number one like like partner and like seminars and stuff and like i was like oh who is this guy like he's this like young kid looking thing and like mm -hmm. he was teaching alongside uh henner now he's like he's becoming one of the best fighters in the ufc Oh. Yeah, he's like um, I know you know nothing about I Brian T. City, yeah. so I'm gonna like fill you in. <laughs> so basically, he's like he was such an underdog. He's been fighting his whole life. He uh, he I don't know if he's been in gangs, but he was like he had some gang related stuff. Okay. You know, when he was a kid, yeah. right? And then like the he was like a bad kid in because he grew up in the projects. Mm -hmm. You know, like Section Eight, where like all those. You know, like uh, Kendrick Lamar, like Section 8, oh, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, he grew up there, and then like, he was poor, then they got out, and then he started uh, fighting and training in the UFC and stuff. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, at the Gracie Academy. Mm -hmm. And, like, Henry would always be like, yo, man, like, be positive, like, you know, change your life and stuff. And, like, and then he met his boxing coach who also said the same thing, but he was, like, he was battling against, like, should I, you know, roll with my homies or should I, like you know be good right yeah but like he had the innate good quality inside of him the whole time mm -hmm. okay so uh he's fighting for uh the the title shot he's not fighting for the title um the guy who was fighting for the title the champion hurt himself so instead of canceling it or like waiting uh t city who's number three is fighting number two to go up against number one later Oh. You know what I'm saying? So two and three are fighting, yeah. and the winner of this gets to fight number one. Oh, I see, I see. So he, he's undefeated right now. Yeah. So I like it because he's undefeated because uh, he's using the original principles of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, uh, jiu mm -hmm. which is like, you know, actually, like Jiu-Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu became like very sportive, but the original Jiu-Jitsu had like strikes involved, right? Yeah. So he comes from that, and then if you watch any of his fights, like he is like jujitsu one oh one. Like you watch it, and you're like, man, this guy is amazing because he grew up with it, right? Oh, I see, I see. So, uh, so now that's, that's not the important part. I mean, anybody's a good fighter. What's really cool is during his last fight where he headlined. Yeah. Um, so he, he had like the spotlight because you had you headlined, right? Mm -hmm. And he fought a big name. He used that as an opportunity to um, to say that he wants to he needs he wants people to be more positive and like love one another and then he wants to use the ufc as a platform to get his message out there that people need to become better people oh okay that's, that's pretty cool good. right yeah, yeah, and yeah. like because he grew up in the project so like uh with the with the money that he earned from his last fight mm -hmm. and he re-signed the negotiation contract for ufc uh what happened is he uh he started his own uh t-city brian ortega foundation so they oh. they use money to help underprivileged kids like get a helping hand yeah because he's like i was an underprivileged kid mm -hmm. and i would have loved to have something like this when i was growing up so it's weird how like the through the darkness you see the light yeah you know what i'm saying because he had like such a rough childhood not super i mean like it's, it's pretty rough he's like in the projects and stuff and then now he's like using it as a platform for good yeah and i mean anything to help like his community in a sense, right? Yeah, it's really great, right? It's really good. Yeah. That's that's why it's super commendable, and it's it's funny because like so I'm like watching all of his interviews, and and so they say there's no atheists in foxholes, right? So like everyone who's in war believes in God. Uh huh. So like I've noticed that all UFC fighters are obsessed with God. Like nobody is like Joe Rogany, where like there's no God, it's all in your mind because they need something to believe in in order to make themselves you yeah. know fight better, right? That's but not I, true about war though. There's one guy that's not. That wasn't. That was atheist. Well, I mean, all right, let's say 80-20. 80% oh, yeah. believe yeah. he died. Um, so we'll, we'll say 80-20. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like 80% believe in um, believe in God because it's something to push them. Yeah, 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 better, yeah. right? So I also believe that uh, spirituality, true spirituality, true spirituality, like enlightenment where it's like you're not confused mm -hmm. is born through war. Not war, but like hardship. 
Yeah. So mm-hmm. like I'm watching his interviews and everything he's saying, I totally agree. There's nothing that I'm like, oh, you're kind of wrong here. But it's only because you've been through the bad. Mm-hmm. So you know what's good. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was saying like uh, one really cool thing he said is like um, uh, he's like social media is all negative. Like um, they you see like a lot of negativity, but everybody when you see like a starving child or something or somebody in need, you're like, oh, man, like um, they, they could really use some help. He's like, uh, everyone talks about it, but nobody's about it. Mm-hmm. Nobody's actually going to go help. And I'm like, that's a real statement. You know what I mean? But it's like he only saw that through the hardship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, uh, yeah, I I, uh, I just think it's very commendable. You know? Oh, I think it's really cool. Like using his platform for good. And uh, it seems like it actually comes from the heart. It doesn't seem like it's like, well, what's really interesting is it's like, People can do good for two reasons. Mm-hmm. You can do good and delude yourself into thinking you're doing good because you're doing good, but you're actually doing it for selfish reasons. Yeah. Only you will know. Only you will know. Or you'll do good and like it'll be from a good place in your heart because you have all the money, you have all the resources, and you're just like, man, I just need to give back. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't really matter, you know, because that's what he's saying. He's like, I can already help out my family, and now it's like, let's let's do some good in this world, you know, because I have a voice now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know. Oh yeah, first, yeah. that is commendable. And and I could feel it emanating off him mm-hmm. versus because it's like you know some people are like oh I want to do good, you know like there's some motivational speakers like I won't name them but like yeah. some of them are like oh you can change your life but it's like you're only saying that because you want them to buy tickets to your event so that you can tell them that they could change their life <laughs> right and they're like look I changed my life but they changed their life off the hardship off your broken back mm-hmm. you know what I mean it's like by selling you a belief system I will make my own money so that's what I meant about like I see you yeah, can yeah, yeah. you can like they seem like they want to help you but really they want to help themselves you know mm-hmm. but for him it's it doesn't doesn't feel that way yeah, yeah. No, I mean that's pretty, that's pretty good yeah I don't know much about these people so I mean it's interesting uh, that I mean a person like UFC fighter you know like that now has the opportunity. And I think a lot of people do that too. Like I know a lot of rappers that come back. Oh, like 50 Cent? Yeah, he went to Africa. Cent. I think a lot of them do. They go, not just Africa, but like they do help their community. Then they realized about Africa. That was a whole different story for him. That's true. Uh, Kendrick Lamar is a huge one about that too. Yeah. Um, I was watching the Vice interview and they're like, oh, we saw you donate all this money to the music program. He's like, oh, how'd you hear about that? Because he kept it under wraps, right? Oh, he didn't want to tell anyone. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. I think it was the principal who told the Vice News. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's like, yeah, I didn't. See, I think I, I like that though. That. I, I think I like that when when you do something, but you're not, you don't want to brag about yeah, it. Yeah, it's real altruism. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as you say like, hey, check it out, I did this for the community. Yeah, yeah. Then so it's then, like, yeah, you just want to make your star brighter. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's where the motivational speaker that I was talking about. Where it's like, hey, come this like, they, they're like, okay, if I help my community. And then it'll cost me like a hundred thousand, let's say. Mm-hmm. But then I could write a book about it and make three hundred thousand. Let's do it. That's yeah, yeah, like yeah. negative, right. you know? Yeah, what I mean? yeah, like, yeah. dang, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be careful of those kinds. Yeah, you got to be aware. But like, how do you know when someone does? You know what I mean? Like, someone's got to do. <laughs> That's okay. So, uh, it's interesting. I was watching a. Uh, um, well, this is a great segue into another topic: Carl Jung philosophy. Mm-hmm. So I was watching an interview, and they're saying that uh, Carl Jung. Um, it, it's like w- w- consciousness to become con- alright so consciousness it just means like active awareness that's how I define it active yeah. awareness because it's like what does it really mean to be conscious like people say all the time like oh your consciousness has to be shifted into this blah blah blah, blah right and it's like what is what does consciousness mean mm-hmm. nobody knows that like 80% of people 80-20 is like the general rule <laughs> it's like it's sort of like saying like more than yeah, more yeah. than less you know what I mean right um so 80 20 it's well side note it's funny because when i was taking like business in school i was so confused because when they say 80 20 i'm like wow how do they know this exact like <laughs> I, I didn't realize it was like a metaphor there's no real exact 80 no, 20 yeah. but like everyone says 80 20 principle all the time and i was like dang how did you calculate the 80 <laughs> you're like what kind of research went into this maybe it's like 75 percent. like how do you know it's 80 but then it's like I realized I was being too fucking, uh, too freaking uh, <laughs> obsessed with like yeah, yeah, yeah. the literal. Um, so, anyways, uh, so he was saying that consciousness, uh, it's it's kind of a disease if you have too little or too much. So, like in the beginning, we were unconscious, right? We're all unconscious beings. We don't know we're alive. 
Okay. Then you grow a little bit of consciousness, and then you get into this problem. Man, I'm going to die. Yeah. You're, or I don't have this in my life. Oh, mm-hmm. I could become better. You start wanting things because you're a little bit conscious. You're conscious of who you are. Yeah. Right? And then uh, Carl Jung said that the, the, um, the cure for that is one of two ways. You can, either, uh, do, uh, you can either subdue your consciousness through drugs and alcohol or doing bad things, refusing yeah. to grow up, right? Because you're like, oh, I don't want to become conscious anymore. So you, you become a man boy. You know, mm-hmm. or you oh, you become more conscious, and then becoming super conscious, you defeat your lack of consciousness. So if you realize, okay, we all die, you yeah. become more conscious. Okay. Right. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's like, oh, I'm a part of a universe that's bigger than I am. Mm-hmm. Then you become more conscious, and then you're you're less afraid of your low consciousness. Okay. You know, you overcome your insecurity by by realizing the really important things. Mm-hmm. You become super consciousness. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so, so the funny part about Carl Jung is people who. So I, I'm using terms like the uh, lowercase self, the higher self, consciousness, um, uh, one in oneness, mm-hmm. uh, supreme being. You know, all, the, all enlightenment. Right. So we we come to this assumption that the gurus of India came and then they were like, um, these are the words and these are like the the ideas that I'm going to teach here. Yeah. Right? Like you, you hear these words in like yoga and spiritual texts all the time. And usually it comes from like an like a Indian guru. Mm-hmm. Right? The, these kinds of words. But what people fail to realize if they do the research is these are actually Carl Jung philosophies. So I, I heard Russell Brand talking about Carl Jung, Carl Jung, Carl Jung. So I'm like, okay, let me, let me pick up a book and read about it. Right? And then when I picked up the book and read about it, I'm like, oh, these are all the yoga philosophies that people claim are yoga, but they don't realize they're practicing psychology. That's why yoga works. Yoga works because you're actually doing self-psychology on yourself. Mm -hmm. So the problem, though, is that uh, medical people medical people uh, say that Carl Jung is incorrect and we move past him, right? But I think that's just because people thought he was like a, a racist. You know what I mean? And like, if you so they thought he was a racist because he said um, he said how can the the Jew they thought he was like an anti semite because he's like how can the Jews believe that they are the king of all people when God has multiple uh-huh. other people right mm-hmm. it's a very like logical conscious thing it's like why does this one race one group believe they're more important than everyone else right so he's labeled an, a friggin Jew hater because <laughs> because of that but it's right. like no I'm just becoming more conscious yeah, yeah, yeah. of what's really going on mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know. So I think that's why maybe he got like a little bit of slack. Maybe he was ahead of his time, I think. But like, it's funny how that happens. Like people don't do enough research, i.e. they don't become extra conscious and they fail to realize what's really going on. And then they become ignorant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you don't, if you don't look past what you think, then you will never grow past what you are, mm-hmm. you know? And you'll always think you're right. But I think the truly conscious people are the ones that are like, I don't know that I'm right so logic but there's a difference right you can be like they're like oh no you're being you're you're unwavering you know but it's like no like I just need to understand more and you need to make me understand right you know I think we talked about that in the last one about like yeah like let, letting go of your, mm-hmm. your thoughts but yeah I, I just I don't know it's funny how and until you look at history you don't really realize when you start to look at history, you realize where you where you've been and where you're going. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because things repeat themselves. Like mm-hmm. like movies, entertainment, um, sporting events. They were all like there thousands of years ago, just in different forms. Yeah, you know what I mean? We're doing the same thing. Like nobody changes. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah that's very true. Yeah. Speaking of no change, copycats for Apple. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's been going on for a long time, mm-hmm. and then since the new iPhone 10. But, but this is what I'm saying. They're trendsetters yeah. in the industry. Like Apple is like the best. I mean, maybe not tech-wise, like you were saying before. Like, like not yeah, not necessarily. They're not the first in certain software, but they are. I would say in design, yeah. Yeah, they oh yeah, sleek. Really Everyone loves that. Yeah, like the full face of the uh, phone, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. The full face, but the thing with that had a notch. I remember, like, when it first came out a few months ago, everyone's laughing. Oh, man, it's a notch. Like, everyone, you it's know. It's a notch. That's the notch for the, for the iPhone X. This is where the cameras are. 
That's why the... Oh, okay, yeah, I got They, they call it the notch. Okay, yeah. Or I the mean, people call it the notch. Okay, cool. And then, you know, I was like, oh, there's no way... Like, no one's going to do that because that's, like, a stupid design. Right, right, right. And then, and then I read a thing just the other day, and there's, like, there's a bunch of these different phones now... Copying putting the, notches? Putting no notches. No way. <laughs> But see, that's, that's what happens, man. Like, when you're so good at what you do, people are just going to copy. Copy, like, uh, imitation is the greatest form of flattery, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you know what I say to that? Because, like, like if, if I create an idea and then I notice somebody, like, copying that idea, mm-hmm. I just say, like, you'll just never do it as better as me. Better than me. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to – I believe you have to have so much confidence in yourself that it doesn't matter what other people do because you're so good at what you do. You're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. like, good luck. <laughs> that's that's how I always that's how I always like walk through um, all like because uh, my sister will always be like she's like oh well what if what if this happens to you what if this happens to you like what if they kick you out or something blah 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 I'm like yeah I'll, I'll tell them good luck like because you don't have me anymore yeah, yeah, yeah you know what I mean right 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 I mean it could be a deluded self belief but everyone has to believe in themselves I think everyone's got to believe in th- themselves so much and what they do. That they should have the confidence to walk away from anything, mm-hmm. you know. And it's like, it's like, it's like, um, I'm not. I'm so important, but it's like, like, help me out here. You know what I'm trying to say, right? It's like I'm so good at what I do, right? That like, I don't even care about you. You know, it's like it sounds so <laughs> it's, dick, but yeah, it's not. Yeah, I'm yeah. not trying to be dick. It's like, it's like. It's hard to it's hard to say it without sounding like a jerk, but it's mm-hmm. like it's like I'm so secure in my own stuff that it's like it doesn't matter what you do because I I know what I got, right? And I know what I got's gold. It's hmm. but it's like but how do you know you got's gold? I don't know because I think it's cool, like you know. Yeah, yeah. I I see what you're saying. There's probably some actual term. But, but I've seen like a lot of interviews for artists like I, I love watching artists interviews because they're so motivational mm-hmm. and all of them say the same thing it's like dude I just, I just had an unwavering belief in myself yeah you know it's like even when my, my tracks weren't doing too great it's like it'll get better I, I'll get better you know yeah so it, yeah so you gotta I, like it, it's I guess like you have to believe in your ability to do great things mm-hmm. you know because it's like it might not be good now but it'll be good soon because I know I'm that sick yeah I have the capacity to, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. People out there, if you're listening, you have to believe in yourself so that you can just, or don't, I mean, however you want to walk through this life, fully conscious or half conscious, you know, Carl Jung, segue back. Right. At, yeah, it doesn't matter which way. We all die at the end anyways. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, what's that analogy, the, uh, the story? I think we said this before, but like the, the Indian and the Alexander the Great. Yeah. You tell it, you tell it. Because I heard it from you. I was like, oh, that's a really freaking enlightened way to say it. Uh, what did I say? Oh, it's like... Um, it's like everyone... like You're thinking you're the first one to t- uh, reach the top of the mountain kind of thing. Like, yeah, 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 There's already so much flags already up there. Like you're. Not, oh, yeah, that, that was an alternate one. Is that one. the one? No, no, that, that was an alternate thinking? one. You said that before, too. Uh, I but don't know which one you're talking about. You told me that one before. But uh, <laughs> the, the one I like is, uh, is uh, Alexander came upon an, an Indian guru and then I don't know if it was a guru he's just a person I, I just thought alright well I don't I'd know whatever it is enlightened, sure you know? okay. so uh, uh, the Indian guru is like what are you doing and then uh, Alexander's like I'm conquering the whole world and then <laughs> Alexander's like what are you doing I'm just chilling and they both laughed at right, each other right right yeah because they both that. knew that both were correct and incorrect uh, yeah it's like however you want to look at life man yeah both laughed at each other thinking yeah. each of them are stupid Exactly, 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 yeah. But it's like, it's just different ways to look at life, man. Do you want to do you wanna do things or not? Or maybe your your experience is doing something. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, like I, I think we have two different, diver- like, I'd say I'm more um, more pioneering. No, nah, pioneering is too heavy. Uh, I'm more, um, cre- not creative. I'm more... Uh, it's like pushing boundary. Like it's like I want to accomplish things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Alexander. Just, just I'm, I'm more Alexander. More, more on Alexander. And of you're, story. you're more, you're more the Indian of the story. <laughs> I am but you are Indian, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah. So yeah. like, you, you're very much into like, oh, the life's experience is its own reward. Right. Right. And I'm very much like, well, my reward is accomplishing what I want, what I set out to do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with both. It's- 
as long as you're happy, it's cool. But then you could be like, you could be like, you could have the nature of the opposite, and you're doing the other thing. Yeah, so it's like right. you so could that, you could yeah, be yeah. naturally an Indian. And you're like you're like oh I, I want to just chill, but your whole family is about conquer, conquer, conquer. Mm-hmm. Or you want to conquer, but it's like you're you're too chill. Yeah. So you can't conquer. So in both scenarios, like too much unrest. You know. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta find where your kind of place of this. You, you know you, you, you know where planet, peace right? you know where peace resides when action and intention are one. Mm-hmm. You know, I came upon that realization through. Uh, this is gonna sound so hocus pocus, but like I came upon that realization through meditation because I was like sitting there and I was like, "Why is this working? Why? Why am I at peace? Why? Am, why am I at rest? Mm-hmm. You know?" And then I realized it's because my action was sitting there and my intention was to sit there. I was like, my action and intention had become one, and then I became at peace. It's sort of like if you're playing a game like basketball. Your action and intention are one. You're you're in the zone. They say right, right. But if you're if you're actually if you're thinking about like what you got to cook for dinner, and then you're playing basketball, you're not in sync. And then, you know, mm-hmm. you're um, that's when like suffering comes up. Like I don't even know if it's suffering. I suffering guess they call is, it, suffering's like. Is, uh, it, it's sort of like a dissociation. If, yeah. if, if two things are not the same, if they're not going in the same direction, you have a, you have a conflict, and mm-hmm. then people call that suffering. But conflict's also good. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like conflict is like, oh, I want to be here, but I'm not there, so I need to push my actions to get there. Mm-hmm. So I'm at conflict too, but I don't call it suffering. It's just no, no, like yeah. stress, mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. Maybe it's not suffering. Maybe it's stress. Ooh, we came upon another secret of the universe right there. It's not suffering, it's stress. You know, people are like, oh, if the mind and body are not one, blah, 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 then yeah. you will suffer. But it's not, that's not true. If the mind and body are not one, you will, you will undergo stress. Your interpretation either create, your interpretation of that stress either creates suffering or it creates motivation. Mm-hmm. Bang, bang. Yeah, they are just adding on to... So what, what, I, I agree with you. Like I'm just adding on to it because I, I feel like we didn't define it enough. We're not fully conscious, Carl Jung again, because you need to push the conscious understanding yeah. to really become awake to what's going on. Mm-hmm. Carl Jung, not yogic philosophy. Carl Jung came with it first. Didn't you say something that you you saw that Carl Jung went to India, but he didn't want to interact with the gurus because he didn't want to he didn't want to distort his perception of what I, he thought. I don't know if that was what it is because again, I don't know about distorting necessarily that way. Yeah. Or I'll just cut the I'll th- cut the segment clip so that people will think I was correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry, 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 or that. or that. Again, this is probably the view of them thinking that he's a racist that. That's what I'm saying, yeah. That, oh, he didn't want to talk to them because... He's too good for them. He's, yeah, he, like, why would they have figured it out, you know, kind of thing. True. I don't know. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. All Again, right. we don't know if, what kind of character they were. I don't know if that matters. I mean, does his philosophies work kind of thing? Right? That's what I'm saying. Right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You, you know whose philosophies don't... All right, all right. so uh, Sigmund Freud believes in like the animalistic nature that's why he's like oh oh, like sexual impulse rules everything Mm -hmm. right which is true on an animalistic level so carl jung uh his his mentor was sigmund freud and then they they split up because sigmund freud was very close-minded he didn't want anything to mess with his theories so he's he's notoriously famous for always dis dis like not disproving but like um like being like i'm not gonna listen to you because yeah. if it didn't if it didn't follow his paradigm because mm-hmm. he was so in belief of himself right which is a bad version whereas Carl yeah. Jung was like uh, I actually think it's more like this so that's why they split up because he so uh, Sigmund Freud was all about the animalistic brain right which makes sense if sexual impulse he believed that like oh the reason why you want this is because of some sexual impulse mm-hmm. oh you have this tendency because of your sexual repression blah 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 and carl young said no no we have a secondary part to ourselves so base s which is the self that we are to our parents or to our friends yeah. like your acting self and the the capital s the higher self again yogic philosophy people assume that lowercase and capital come from yoga not true because they didn't even understand english so you could make the argument that, oh, the yogis came up with this. Not true, because how would you have the lexicon to explain what it is your philosophy was? Maybe it's very similar, true, but 
you using self and self, uh, self and higher case self, uh, higher self, uh, actually is a Carl Jung philosophy. So I just wanted to diverge back to that because. So. Wait, 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 wait. So then, um, so then Carl Jung believed in the higher case self, which is the mo- self monitoring self, where it's like beyond your your beyond your identification, yeah, and into like you. Um, more your morals and like your your true wants and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? Sorry, you're saying. So, you're saying that he came up with it first, or that those terminologies? He came up with the first. He said that he came or up. Or the with, terminologies didn't exist and in. Oh, they, they all right. So they didn't exist, and then he came up with the terminology. But the philosophy he came up with he, he came up with when he was a child. So when he was a little kid, he was like, Mom, I kind of feel like I have two cells inside of me. And they're like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, but I'm saying, like, so it didn't exist before? Did they not know of this thing before? No, nobody wrote it down. Nobody, like, nobody codified or, like, um, turned it into a paradigm. Uh, I'm sure people felt it. They're like, no, I'm oh, like, two oh, it, so you're saying it was never there in India? No, no. India, or so... Uh, Carl Jung became a scholar and he made all his philosophies 17 years before the first Indian came, the first guru of India came to America. So it might have been in India. Oh, okay. But, but what I'm saying is like. In America, the American version. Because everyone's all you're like. Saying. Everyone's all like spiritualist. I think that's what we're trying to like. That's what I'm trying uh, to decipher. Like, because cause like the modern day yogi. Yeah, I wanted to be more specific. Oh, here I see, I see, I see. I think people are going to misunderstand that. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, yeah. And then okay. take it as if he made it and not the other. No, no, no. Okay, so, so we, we always talk about this, like how the Western yogi is different from the Eastern yogi. Okay. Right? Because like you're actually, you've been to India. You're, you're born in India? No, no, I was born here. Oh, you're born here, but then you lived in India. Um, for a short then, time, yeah. Yeah, for a short time. Then you go back and forth. But so you, you've, you've, you've got experience. your parents' influences who exactly, from exactly. there, right? Yeah. So like, it's sort of like martial artists here. People who are martial artists here, they're like, oh my God, that's amazing. But then you go to Asia and they're like, oh, you're a bum. Mm-hmm. Right? So like, I'm sh- like, explain the Indian yogi, the Eastern yogi. Are they like praised or are they like kind of like bums? Oh, here. No, no, there. Oh, there? Yeah. Oh, they're like bums. Yeah, I they're guess. like bums. Yeah, yeah, but then yeah. if you look at here, it's like the Western yogi is all about being like glorified. They're like, oh my God, you're a yogi. You know? <laughs> oh my God, you're a martial artist. Oh, you're a fifth degree black belt. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, yeah, but like you just, it's like, it's so esoteric. So this is why I became obsessed as a child. I loved anime, right? And I became obsessed with the esoteric because like in Western culture, they glorify these things so heavy. Yeah. Right. It's like, oh, you're you're like a master martial artist and you're a master yogi, mm-hmm. right? But then if you go to like the eastern places, it's not that special, you know. It it's not it's special, but it's like it's not yeah. it's not glorified as much as people think. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And like, um, and then becoming becoming a I don't even like to say it, but becoming a master martial artist <laughs> and like a highest registered yogi, mm-hmm. it's sort of like well, not the highest actually. I'm, one more ahead of me but to be a registered 500 hour yogi it's like yeah. you get the prestige of like wow you're a 500 hour yogi and you're a master martial artist like mm-hmm. fifth degree black belt blah mm-hmm. blah blah but it's like you don't really know what that means like i'm still me yeah like you know oh, I it just means that i've like i've danced in the esoteric longer than you so the esoteric is basically the unknown yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's like just because you don't know what it is doesn't mm-hmm. make it special it just means you don't know what it is mm-hmm. you know yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, so so that that's what we're trying to uh, uh, dispel here. It's like Carl. Y- oh, nice, you got saved. So uh, it's, that's what we're trying to dispel here. Um, sorry if you're listening to this, just the audio. Vish is playing a video game, so I keep reacting to the game because it's so interesting. <laughs> uh, so that's what we're trying to differentiate here. Like the Eastern Yogi is like it's not that special, but the Western Yogi believes it's super special. Yeah. But it's only because one has not seeing the other so like if you go to the east they're all gonna be like oh businessman oh you're amazing but then you go to the west and they're like ew ew businessman you know what i mean it's like that's the Tao of life mm-hmm. you know like just because you haven't had one just like the unknown or something you know like well they always want the what the, grass is always greener yeah right right like because yeah. like yeah it's so most people's ideology changing here but it's they want to be more western on the other side now right yeah, true. Right. They're, yeah, exactly. That's true. Yeah, and then they're gonna hit a tipping point, and they're gonna like, oh, we gotta go back to our roots yeah, of being like Eastern. A, y- yeah, it's the, go it's back the Dao, and forth. The yeah. yin yang, the balance of nature. Well, yeah. I mean, of course, it's, if th- that will keep happening, if people are 
if someone else is prospering more, you want that too. Yeah, yeah, that's right? true. Yeah, as a course, country, yeah. is like, oh, they're, you know. Oh, I mean? oh, so like the East is not prospering uh, economically, so they they glorify the economics of it. Mm-hmm. The West, the West for the economics. The West is not prospering spiritually, so they look to the East yeah. for spiritual um, guidance. Right. But this is where we diverge back to our, our real point. We think that all this stuff comes from the East. Yes, it does. Like similar philosophies, but our our true um, guide in all this is Carl Jung. That was a big eye opener. If you read like mm-hmm. if you read like a short introduction to Carl Jung uh, on Amazon, that's what tipped me off because I was like, wow, we we totally are looking into the wrong things, you know? Yeah. Because it's like it's like I I just don't get it's like it's like the Eastern people they didn't speak in, like English was not their native tongue, so how would you create such a very abstract terminology for? Uh, an abstract concept without having a thorough understanding of what words mean. Well, how could you differentiate much... between self and self? How could you do that? Right, but it's like it's like if if I it's like not a... like English was not in India. They were in you know, with the British rule. It was there for a long time. Yeah, but like, do you think it was? Do you think these these bum yogis? We're so educated in in English <laughs> yeah, yeah, to I'm, come up with. I'm not saying that this is a fact or not. I'm just saying. No, no, but that's what I'm saying. Like, like, like the assumption is that didn't have English before. No, no, of course, of course, yes, yeah. yes, yes. But what I'm saying is like the highest level of abstract thinking to come up with terminology or like a lexicon that's um, that's so intricate mm-hmm. that they could describe such an abstract concept as lowercase self and capital self. Mm-hmm. You know, wouldn't you say like your, your, um, like to say self and self is super abstract. If you think of it on a fifth grade level, you'd say something like, uh, your actor and your, uh, and your monitor. Yeah. You know what I mean? They wouldn't come up with self and self, mm-hmm. but that's again, a Carl Jung thing. He came up with capital S and lowercase s. Yeah. All right. So, you got anything more to say about that? To rant? No. No. All right. Cool. So, um, our fifth now, because we we usually um, talk about five things. Uh, I think from now on, I kind of want to pose like a philosophical question as like the last one sure. to like you know, for always our fifth will be something philosophical because I like to wax philosophical and I haven't done that in a while. Um, so. My question is, would you kill one person to save a thousand? Kill one person to save I, a thousand? I, yeah, I saw this in a, I mean, we've all heard it before, but I was watching like interviews of other people and somebody, like I think it's Vogue, they asked the person. Okay. And I was like, oh, wow, what an interesting question. <laughs> yeah, so would you kill one person to save a thousand? I think it depends on who that one person is. Ooh. Ooh, Okay. Okay, okay, you just, all right, that's cool, that's cool. All right, right? so I've never heard make... it. That's, that's funny, usually people are like, no, I wouldn't, or yes, I would. And you're like, well, it depends on who the person is. I'm like, okay, i never heard that before. <laughs> all right, so uh, who, what do you mean? Like, explain that. Like, it's someone you dislike? Oh, it depends someone, on the context. Or someone you like. You blew my mind. <laughs> okay, that's funny. That's actually really funny. Okay. I like, I appreciate that a lot. So would you kill one person to save a thousand? Okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. This is this is this is the this is the jet this is the lowercase s speaking right here. Would I kill one to save a thousand? Okay, let me look at the the pros and cons, let me look at the mental accounting. <laughs> the higher case s goes, well who are the one and who are the thousand? What's the context? <laughs> That's a higher consciousness okay. thought right there. Because it's like, well, all right, if it's one good guy and then a thousand rapists, well the question the answer is easy. You're right. Yeah. But but nobody thinks that way. Everyone thinks that's that. Wow, you can actually observe how society is as a whole just by asking that one simple question: Who thought outside of the box? <laughs> you know, it's really funny. The education system doesn't allow you to think that way, right? Because yeah. as soon as they're like one or a thousand, they want a lower case s answer. They want like a superficial one. Mm-hmm. But then as soon as mm-hmm. I remember, I, I definitely remember like being the oddball in class being like, well, what about, what about this? You know, and they're like, oh, you're just wasting our time. But that's actually <laughs> a really true thought. Nobody's ever thought of that before. It's like, well, what if they were a thousand rapists? 
Yeah. The, the answer. Oh my even, god! Even, you're blowing it, my mind right now. Yeah, yeah. Even that case, or even who that person is, you're going to kill too, right? Yeah, it's true. Wow. It's always that's that's the moral moral lesson of the week. <laughs> it's like uh, always look at the context because yeah, you could save a thousand, but who are those thousand and who are the one? Yeah, exactly. But if it's a thousand good people and one rapist, well, it's easy. Yeah, it's easy. Boop. Dang. All right, we're gonna end with that. Context is king, mm-hmm. but context is king. Back to Carl Jung, you got to become a higher consciousness and don't reside in the lower one. Right. Because if you reside in the lower one, you don't have all the facts and you're just like ignorant. Because all the people that answer that question, now that I look at it, after you said that, I'm looking at all the people that answer that question. I'm like, wow, they're all ignorant. Even I was ignorant. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I would easily kill the one to save the thousand. <laughs> and when you said that, I'm like, uh, well, actually, uh, what does Vishal mean? Uh, supreme, con- supreme consciousness. Supreme consciousness. <laughs> so you just lived up to your name right there. Okay. <laughs> because friggin', I didn't even think about that one. Mm. And if you were listening to this podcast and you thought of that one, you were supreme consciousness level two. Yeah. But I am deserve not. A badge. You deserve a badge. I didn't think about that one. That's so funny. That's going to change my whole perspective okay. on that question. Okay. Context is king. All okay. right. So until next time, get learned because ignorance is not bliss. Or it can be bliss. It can be bliss, yeah. But ignorance is ignorance. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to be called ignorant? It's up to you. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I don't. No. But even I'm... saying that I don't shows how ignorant I am because I am <laughs> ignorant. Mm hmm. Paradoxes. <laughs> I wonder how many people, like, you know what's funny? Like, it depends. Like, if you're listening to this, if you understand what it is we're talking about, it completely makes sense. But then if you're, if you don't understand what's going on, then like it already shows and you're probably gonna you've already turned it off you're like i'm so confused (laughs) you know like they're just talking in circles it's total bs not really if you understand the layers of reality right you know yeah not to make it sound pretentious or anything i'm just saying it's like it's just like it's like it's like friggin' uh, algebra and uh discrete mathematics right there's different layers to things Yeah, yeah 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 and if you want to uh if you want to know what it is we're talking about, if you hear it and you're like, there's some truth to this, but I don't understand what they're saying, you can check out uh, godlightmyfire.com slash books, read up on those suggested books or docs. Yeah, they have a whole thing, resources yeah. there. You can check yeah. out stuff that we've watched and read and seen. and like. Yeah. Well, I don't read, but yeah, as I learned all from watching. <laughs> That's true. I'm, it's funny how like education goes, right? Like I'm obsessed with reading because like – right. I was never though. I think the first book I read, no, the first book I read cover to cover was Twilight. <laughs> okay, yeah. Right, and like I think uh, probably mine was probably Harry Potter. I think. Oh, so you have you've read books before? No, I yeah, mean, yeah, but okay. these aren't like, are they really consciousness books? No, no, they're not. They're not. Well, could be. You can analogy, have certain yeah, things. You can, yeah, you can. You can learn there. some things. Yeah, but but, um, it like I I assume that all books were like Harry Potter or Twilight. So I was like, oh, there's no <laughs> point in reading. Uh, right? yeah, I gotta okay. watch some docs or something, right? Mm-hmm. And then I I stumbled across like this whole like um it's not esoteric this whole like left field philosophy and like spirituality yeah. books you know mm-hmm. but some of it's total garbage though like you can read some stuff and like they talk about completely unrealistic things you know they're yeah. like there was once a brahmin who was able to hold his breath for six hours i'm like i don't think so <laughs> maybe i don't I, think so I, though it just doesn't seem probable you, you ever hear of light eaters I forgot what I forgot what the exact word is. It, they basically it's they, like an anime character. Or something. Uh, <laughs> like a bleach character. Or something. No, no, no. That's, That's true. It, it, yeah, you're right. Right. No, I just I'm yeah, 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 yeah. so like I'm, I have the anime freaking hard programming. That's why I came up with that name. That's not the actual name. Okay. Uh, so uh, basically, what they do is they don't eat food. They create sustenance off of sunlight. Mm-hmm, they mm-hmm. think they're plants. Yeah. That's not real. I think we've had arguments over this. When, I remember bringing up some of these kinds yeah, of Yeah, but that's when I was lower conscious. I was, like, confused. Um, I was like, I man, I gotta believe... I, I, I don't believe this. <laughs> you, you know what's funny? Like, the path of... Um, the path of true understanding, you have to go through ignorance. Because yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember the whole time when I was studying all this stuff and I believed that the esoteric was real. Some of it's real, some of it's not. So like, You really got to figure I, out. But, but I was so into it and we were having arguments about like, that's not real. I'm like, dude, it's totally real because whoa, 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 you can totally chi energy, uh, chakras, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And I was like obsessed. You know what really fixes that? The Tao. So 
uh, why, what I mean by DAO, you have to go like artistic license and then you have to go like scientific license. Right. So you got to fact check everything, you know what I mean? But the hardest, for, the hardest part for people to do is fact check what they think they know because mm-hmm. they don't want to break their belief in themselves. Yeah, yeah. They're, That's why I said yeah. you have to have un, unyielding belief in yourself that you're like, it doesn't matter what I like I believe in my I'm, I right, know right, I'm good right, right. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, so it's yeah, like yeah. okay I'll just learn how to do it better next mm-hmm, time you know mm-hmm. so it's like although I went through that whole phase where I was obsessed with like the esoteric BS now that I'm in the science mode I'm fact checking everything I thought I knew <laughs> with science and then showing the parallels between them yeah you know yeah. what I mean like uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson is really good for that because he uses like a lot of spirituality but explains it through science yeah you know uh, one of my favorite ones is uh uh, carbon, uh, hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, and something else. There's like five elements that are in you as a person. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then the five most common elements in the universe are those exact same ones. And the person, I post on Instagram, the person's like, oh, we are the universe. And the universe is me. It's like, yeah. But that's a, that's a spiritual, I was going to say yogic philosophy. It is a yogic philosophy. Like, But um, you get what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's uh, like, I like Neil deGrasse Tyson for that because he's, he's, like he's still, using yeah 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 I, I know what you're saying yeah it's scientific understanding that's uh yeah you got to fact check man that i like yeah. i don't believe in yeah. like like maybe it's true now like i have a skeptical uh, Joe Rogan calls, or brought Brendan Schaub skeptical hippo eyes okay so like i i'm putting those on now it's like okay like so so a good one all right so brick breaking Everyone mm. in martial arts is obsessed with brick breaking. Yeah. Even when I was in, I was like, man, you gotta, you gotta like channel that energy. It's all about a vibration. Uh-huh, it's all about uh-huh. tuning in. Yeah. Right. And then I remember you and Jared were like, no, it's science. And I was like, no, man, it's all about the timing. You're like, you're focused, blah, 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 you know. <laughs> and then like, now I, I think we, we, me and Jared did see this. Like, uh, there's another bottom brick there that you're using. So, so okay. So if Anyways, you don't know, yeah. so if you don't know, in order to break a brick, you have to lift the brick that you're breaking, and it's gonna hit. It's gonna essentially hit against the bottom brick. So people were like, oh, like, you know, you have to channel your energy. You have to become one, like, synchronicity, listen to the, yeah. you know, become in tune in order to break it, clear your mind. Mm. And then it does have something to do with clearing your mind, true, because you, you shouldn't hold back. If you don't believe you're going to break it and your mind is full, you're going to pull back, you know? Right, yeah. Um, but, but you guys were saying, like, well, don't smash it against the other brick. <laughs> and I was like, well, you have to. <laughs> You know, but in my head, like I didn't put two and two together. Yeah, so, that's like, what we kept saying. Yeah, and, and then and you add the science behind it. Now I can break bricks like easy. You know, <laughs> and like before it was so hard because I had to like let me meditate before I hit this brick. Mm. And then now when I do it, I'm like pop, pop, pop. Like people are fascinated, but I'm like, and then and then what I like to do is like I don't like to leave them on the fascination. Um. I like to like explain the science behind it because if you don't, then they're gonna think you're a guru. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. That's not cool. No, you know. That's not cool. But it's funny because like the people that knew about this, um, like like use the meditation to break the bricks before, when they see me like do these tricks or like they see me explain it, they get so pissed because like it's like you broke their belief system. <laughs> and it's like, bro, man, like yeah, but you yeah, it's... you have to believe in yourself so much that mm-hmm. you it doesn't matter what's right or wrong because you'll just gravitate towards the right. Yeah, you know, the truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else to say? No, no I mean, uh, we hit all their points, I guess. I don't know. Final thoughts? Context. <laughs> Context is king. Yeah, I like that one too. You That's a good one. That, yeah. <laughs> context will show you the truth. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. If you don't have the context, you have a diluted truth because it's your truth. Yeah. And your truth is not actually the. People say, like, oh, your truth is the only truth. That's ignorant. <laughs> right because it's like yeah it is the only truth that's true but it's like what level of truth are you operating on if I honestly believe I'm a fox does it make me a fox hell no because science says no <laughs> yeah and I kept saying that to you too yeah that's like, true yeah yeah that's true yeah yeah, yeah you're getting, just gonna I don't know <laughs> gotta man up and understand that you're wrong sometimes <laughs> it's the hardest thing to do hmm yeah realize you're wrong and realize we're wrong. Until next time, listen to the wrong podcast. This one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Take it easy. Take it easy. Bye bye. Peace.